let me show you how to make this super cool overlay effect in Camtasia 2021. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Jewel Tolentino from Esatino Media, and on this channel, we show you how to create profitable content. So that video that you just saw there was inspired by another video that I watched on YouTube. So if you haven't seen my kind of Camtasia tutorials before, I actually get inspired by the real world. So if I watch a movie, if I see something, and in this case, I watched a YouTube video, saw this and thought, that would be cool if I can create something similar. So this is the one that inspired me. So you can see here, it's got the same kind of static image there. They have a video going on in the background and then this sort of colored strip here. And I saw this video and I, I was immediately inspired. So let's break down how I made this one. I have the actual project file here that I was working on. The first thing that I like to start off with is the music. And I like to put that down on track one. Why do I like putting the music on track one? Because I know that I'm going to be building up, right? You generally stack things on top and I'm usually not doing much with the music other than a fade in or a fade out. I'm typically for the main background track, the, the song, I'm not typically going to be playing around with it. So that's why I like to put it at the bottom. I got that song from Artlist.io. It's this song right here. And the cool thing about Artlist is they have different versions of the song. So the original song had singing in it. It had lead vocals, but I wanted it to be kind of like an instrumental. So they offer different versions. There's even a shorter version, and this is kind of the instrumental, no lead vocals. If you want two months free on Artlist, you can head down to the description below. I've been using Artlist for over a year now, and they're amazing. I found the song probably within five minutes. I cannot stand searching hours and hours for a song. Next is this background here. That is also from a stock footage site, Storyblocks. I like Storyblocks because they have already made copyright free video clips that I can use. I really like this one here with the, it's like a futuristic 1980s style. It's super vintage. So I decided to use that for the background. If you are serious about becoming a video editor or you need to use video editing in a full-time kind of way in your business, I do recommend getting these kinds of services because it saves you time. Again, it didn't take me very long to find this clip, less than five minutes, whereas before I would be going on YouTube and spending a long time trying to find free stuff and not really knowing if I could really use it. Next is this shape here. This is just a simple shape that I got when I went to, well, I have it in my favorites, but it's pretty much this shape right here, which you can probably go to annotations, go to shapes, and then it's this one right here. All I did was drag the shape and I sized it according to a little bit less than the width of my shoulders here. So there's the, the photo of me, right? I didn't want it to be the exact length of my shoulders. I wanted to create some depth and dimension. So I did it slightly smaller. And another thing that I added on this shape was I did the opacity at 66%. So if I go full color, you can see that this is a very vibrant yellow, but again, I wanted the the details of it being see-through. When you do these small tweaks, right, they make your stuff look professional. So I had it 
at 66% opacity, which basically means we're making it see-through. Next is the image of me. So this photo was actually taken from a video where I was doing a Camtasia tutorial, I think, and we removed the background. So it's just the static photo of me. And I'll just grab it here on the media. So this was the photo standalone, right? A headshot, basically. And then what I did was I made it black and white through the color adjustment because if I had done it in color and I left it in color with this background, here I'll show you, it still looks cool, but it doesn't have the contrast. It creates depth, right? Because I'm already quite vibrant with my color and the background's already quite vibrant with its color. So I wanted to do something different and this is a really abstract piece of content that I'm gonna be posting on my Instagram and on my Facebook and stuff. So I was just trying something completely different and that's why I made myself a black and white color. And how I did that was I basically went to the color adjustment and I have it here in my favorites. You should always be using the favorites tab. And I dragged it down and you can see that it initially does like a harsh, like a harsh black and white color, right? It looks like I have a spider web here on my shoulder. What you want to do is bring down the contrast and the brightness. Don't touch the saturation because that's what the color is. So just bring this down and then bring this down. And then you start to look normal in black and white. Because then when you bring in color, then you start to be colorful again. And the last part is just text that says create. And it's very fitting because this is an abstract piece of video. It's a post where I'm going to be inspiring others to create. Because I really do feel that when you allow yourself to create, not only does it make you feel good, cool ideas come from it. And you're expanding your mind. And I just know overall it's good for you. So those are all the elements stacked up and you can see that I have the background right at the bottom here. Next is the shape. Then I'm on top of the shape and then the text is on top of technically just the shape, but this is how I've stacked all the media. Last thing are the, the final touches, right? You can see that I pop up, right? Then, immediately after, the background slides in. Then, the yellow shape slides in from the bottom. Then, the create comes down at the bottom. All these little things make up the whole, you know, animation, the whole thing. The first thing that we want to do is we want to add the behavior. This behavior is the sliding. So let's head over to the behaviors. And I did sliding, I dragged it down only to this one. And then I put the direction coming from the left. You can put it from whatever direction you want. Next is the shape, also the sliding behavior, but this time coming from the bottom. Next is the picture of me. And that is a different behavior. That is the scale behavior and I just dragged it down here and then it does this like bouncing effect right it bounces in and then it goes into place for the text is also the sliding technique is the sliding behavior and it's sliding from the top so you can see that I did different directions for everything right it wouldn't I mean it, it will still be cool if you do everything from the same direction but we're wanting to create a dynamic look and visual feel. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention is when you turn on these behaviors, sometimes they turn on other stuff in the during and the out. So I actually turn those off if I don't want them because I just want it for the beginning when it, when it comes into play here. I don't want anything happening while, while it's continually going on and I don't want anything to happen in the out portion. 
The only one where I did have something happen going out is on the picture of me where I go to the out and it shrinks. So I end up shrinking and then it just goes black. So it's kind of like it does this like dramatic ending, right? So that that's all I did that for. Every everything else for the behaviors was was turned off for the during and the out. Another thing that I did as a small touch that you don't fully fully notice but it does make a little bit of a difference is this right here this animation here this is a custom animation and i'm not sure if you noticed but in the beginning my picture slowly gets bigger and bigger as it's moving through the city right the background's going through the city and then i'm actually getting slightly bigger but it's hard to notice but it still makes for a great animation for the video how i did this was i'll grab my photo again and i'll stretch it out make it small so this is what i ended up doing i'll put this in the background is i went to the animations tab grabbed custom dragged it onto me and I clicked on the photo of me and I made it bigger to the size that I wanted. Let's see there. And then I stretched it out so that it would do a growing effect. So let me show you. You can see that it's slightly growing, growing, growing. Because I stretched out the arrow, it's growing at a slow pace. If I had made the arrow shorter, I will grow very quickly. And you see, it'll be much more noticeable. So I chose to do it as a slow progressional growth. I mean, it's really up to you. This is an abstract piece. It can go any which way. This is just the way that I liked it to go. So that's how I created an overlay effect with a still image and a moving background with a bunch of other cool features like music, shapes, text, movement, behaviors. And so now I've just created this and now it's a cool piece of content that I'm going to post up on my Instagram. If you like these kinds of videos, I have a nine plus hour Camtasia course that will fast track your Camtasia learning. The link to buy that course is down in the description below. Thumbs up if you thought this was cool and I'll see you in the next video.